we just finished supper and I thought this might be kind of a fun time to start today's vlog. Hi there, I'm Jennifer and welcome to my channel. I'm out with my husband Warren and we are just tending to our cranberry farm. So tonight Warren has to water. He put a pre-emergent herbicide on today and so that has to be watered in. And although we are under a tornado watch until 9 p.m. tonight, it does not look like we are actually going to get any rain. Uh, there's just a slight 30% chance later this evening. And since some of the cranberry beds he does not have to water tonight, uh, we are just going around and he is closing off the valves so it shuts off any water supply to those beds. Then once that's all finished up, then we're gonna head over to the engine. He's gonna get that started up. Now, he always starts it up and just runs it at a lower uh, RPM until all the pipes fill with water and the very last sprinkler starts to, starts to sprinkle. As soon as that happens, then back to the engine we go, and he gets that pressuring up. And shortly here, you'll hear that pressuring up and the RPMs increasing. That will allow the water pressure to increase and, and the water will spray out of the sprinkler heads, um, you know, the distance that it needs to to reach all sides of the cranberry bed. We take a drive around the marsh then, checking out all the lines and all the sprinkler heads just to be sure that there aren't any plugs. And then Warren wanted to show me something that he was working on. So he is in the process of renovating two cranberry beds this year. And although established cranberry beds, in my opinion, are beautiful, it takes a lot to get them there. They start out quite messy. This here to the naked eye probably looks like a hot mess. And... Yeah, it kind of is for a little while. So there's a lot of pushing dirt around and hauling sand in and replacing bulkheads and getting everything set for the shape of the new cranberry bed. All right, well, we are back home here. So I wanted to, I'm just kind of double checking. This is one of my new plants here. When you brush it like this, it smells like a lemon balm. It's called a mosquito plant. Oh my gosh, my hand smells so good now. Which actually what it kind of smells like is like cleaning, cleaning solution. It smells so good if you like like a lemon and Lysol or something like that. Okay, but it drinks so much water. Oh my gosh, I watered it on Saturday twice. I watered it on Sunday once. I watered it on Monday twice. I watered it this morning, which it's Tuesday, and I'm going to water it again yet tonight. Here's the strawberry plant. Everything probably looks very similar. Oh, look at a little strawberry growing here. Everything looks very similar as it did in the last video, just because we're only a couple days uh, past. Uh, let's see, we are like three days past when that footage was taken. And I don't like to use fertilizer for a week. I like everything to just get established, get their root get their roots established in the soil and everything and then I will come through and I will start using my tiger bloom. I am excited this year to try something new. I, I just I found a recipe on Pinterest and it said equivalent to miracle Grow." so I'll have to look that up again and I was going to make that and test out a few plants like maybe a couple of these. I'll only use the 
the homemade miracle Grow, and on the other ones I'm going to use my regular Tiger Bloom, and we'll see what happens. I guess it's not a perfect test. I should put it head to head with miracle Grow, but I don't typically use miracle Grow. But anyway, I thought it would be kind of fun to try that out. I picked up a few more flowers today. We had to go and pick up chicken feed at the hardware store. And since I was there, I was like, you know what? I feel like I want some more. Now we're, oh, the other ones I put over by the planter on the chicken coop. So I did pick up some of these geraniums. And these I'm going to pot down out front. So I think I'm actually going to just do that right now. All right, I just planted up the window box that's over here on the chicken coop. And so, yeah, I think that looks pretty. These are some super bells, like double super bells. And then I have a white petunia and some purple verbena and another super bells over there. So I'm hoping that this verbena gets really, really full and kind of fills this in and then kind of starts to kind of starts to vine. They kind of, usually if they're well cared for anyway, they'll kind of start to vine out and kind of go every which direction. And that's really what I'm going for over here. No way. <laughs> Warren and the kids were fishing. Those are amazing. Like those nice ones? Are those the biggest? Those are like the biggest crappies I've ever seen. They're nice ones. Look at them compared to my hand. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. That is yeah. awesome. And I caught yeah. That is awesome. Aren't those nice ones? They gotta be, they're just using the finger measurement. They're between 12 and 14. Wow. All right, geraniums are potted up. This here is a white one and they only had one, so I'll have to stop at another store and see if I can find a white geranium. Well, good morning, I'm back here and today what we have going for us is I'm gonna make three different pans of bars. So last week I made a pan of brownies to take to our homeschool talent show. And anyway, um, Warren got one small brownie out of that pan and Maria had to scrape the crumbs. So they were both really disappointed that by the time they got through the line, there wasn't really a whole lot left. And one brownie was not like enough. Warren wanted more than one brownie, I guess. So anyway, we have another event to go to tonight. And I thought rather than try to just, well, I had a couple thoughts. Anyway, here's what I finally went with. I'm gonna make three different pans of bars today and I'll keep half of the bars at home. So everyone can kind of have their fill on that. And I'll take half of each pan of bars to the, um, it's like our, our end of the year faith formation pizza party and party is tonight. What I'm doing here first is making brownies. I just showed making brownies last week, so I'm not gonna do that again. Um, I'm not gonna show you again. And then I'm also going to make zucchini bars with cream cheese frosting, I think. And then something else. I'm not sure what that's gonna be. So, oh, I do know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be ginger bars.
filming with the ginger bars has been a little bit spotty here. Emily and the kids came over and we're just chatting and talking and you know, all of that. So anyway, this is the ginger bars dough. And this recipe is in the first cookbook here, Ginger Cookie Bars. It is on page 46. This is just a favorite recipe. Everything okay? You should just spill your water. Oh. <laughs> um, this is just a great recipe. It's so easy and so fast. It doesn't make like a gorgeous looking bar. Sometimes I find that these are not the first thing to go at like a potluck or something because they just look so unassuming. But they're really, really delicious if you love like molasses and ginger and that type of thing. Anyway, it is a family favorite. I changed my mind on the bars. I think I told you earlier I was going to make the zucchini bars with cream cheese frosting, but I was just thinking I don't think it's a good idea to take something with frosting tonight because let me just show you my tray here. So I have this tray and I have the brownies and I have the ginger bars here. And I really thought, you know, if I put something with frosting, it maybe is just gonna make kind of a mess. So I thought I'd make another, a third type of bar that does not have any frosting. And the recipe I decided is oatmeal jumbles. I haven't made these in quite a long time. Honestly, this is one of those things that I really, really like. And I, I can't even tell you if my younger kids like these or not because it's been a long time since I have made these. So let's let's go for it. It's time to make these again. And this, my mom used to make something like this that I really liked. And yeah, so I'm making them today. So far I have in here a half cup. Oh, Whoops, <laughs> good thing I read that. I need to have a full cup of melted butter. So let me get another stick and get that one melting and then I will bring you back and add in the rest of the ingredients. So you haven't seen a whole lot of glimpses of the kids today. They actually got a new, like a Barbie movie from the library yesterday and so they have really, really been into watching that. And so they've been doing that. I did just have them turn it off though. I said, that's enough. And I sent them to clean their rooms. So they're supposed to like pick up all their toys, vacuum their carpeting, and then I want them each to dust off their dresser and to use some like Clorox wipes and then wipe out the track of their window. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how far they get. I told them, I said, I think that you could all get that done in 30 minutes. I said, that isn't that long. And I think 30 minutes would be totally like the right amount of time to get that done. So when I'm giving the kids a job like that to do, what I like to do is kind of give them a time and say, you know, so to clean your room, vacuum, clean out the track and dust off your dresser, you should be able to get that done in 30 minutes. That way they can kind of look at the clock and kind of watch the time and because sometimes with kids, they'll drag this on and it'll be two hours later and then they're crying and then they're like, this takes too long. And it's like, well, did it really take that long or were you playing most of the time? So I like to give them a time frame and just say, you should be able to, if you are working diligently, you should be able to get this done in this amount of time. So in 15 minutes, I'm going to go and give them like the little halfway warning so they know, oh, okay, I should be halfway done. Like most likely I should have my toys picked up and I should have it vacuumed in that 15 minutes and then that gives me 15 minutes to dust and to clean out the window track. So just, just kind of a little pointer. Alrighty, so I'm just kind of, I melted this. I have a few little chunks left, so I'm just kind of stirring it around until I get that melted. And then I'm gonna put in two cups of oatmeal. It does not say quick or old fashioned. I have old fashioned, so that's what I'm gonna to use today. I'm also going to add in one cup of packed brown sugar. putting in one and a half cups of flour and three-fourths teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna get that stirred here. It kind of makes sort of like a crumble. That's kind of what we're going for here. I'm gonna save out one and a half cups of these of the oatmeal mixture. The rest of it is gonna get pressed into this pan. This is a 9 by 13 pan. Yeah, that's kind of thin, isn't it? Just keep working it until it presses into the bottom of the pan. So 
So there we go, it's nice and solid. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of shortening. One cup of chocolate chips. And then one can, this is 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk. I'm gonna put this on the stove and melt it. I have this over low heat. It actually melts really, really quickly. Now I'm just gonna pour this mixture right over the crust. Okay, and now all of these like little chunks, I'm just going to kind of dump them on top. At this point, if you had little mini M&Ms, that looks really, really pretty on here. Um, these are plenty sweet. They don't need any additional uh, sweetness or anything or candy, but I do think that the mini M&Ms makes these look so pretty and, of course, ends up looking like something that kids would absolutely love. So I'm actually just going to bake them like this. You could put nuts on the top if you'd like. I think walnuts would be really, really good on here. Um, boy, walnut sounds kind of like that would be delicious, doesn't it? All right, I decided I'm going to do it. I'm just going to take these walnuts that I have and just kind of break them up. So not a ton of walnut, just a few pieces here and there. I just, I love the flavor that baked nuts adds to <laughs> adds to the bars. I'm going to put these in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. I'm going to watch them carefully since this pan is just a smidge bigger than actual 9 by 13 pan and I don't really want these to get too overdone. So about 20 but I think I'm going to double check them at 17. Since we are a couple days technically into summer break, well I guess I'm still doing school with Sam but anyway All right, we've got music going in the backyard. The kids, they like to take their uh, radio. They like to take it out to the driveway and then ride their scooters and bikes around. Okay, anyway, what I'm trying to say here though is that since we kind of basically we are on summer break, I have been working at getting back into sort of my, my typical summer routine where I like to block schedule. I like to give myself about two hours in different categories. So like two hours to get outside work done, two hours to get just like general housework cleaning done, two hours to get kitchen work done, and then two hours for maybe walking and some other kind of like relaxation, reading, that type of thing. Uh, so anyway, right now I am gonna be working outside. I got sheets washed and dried and on the bed I, I did um, two beds worth of sheets today. All the bars are done. I do have to cut that other pan of bars though. And I wasn't perfect about the two hours, two hours, two hours thing, but I'm just trying to get back into that rhythm and that kind of routine because it just really helps me in the day to kind of block it off so I don't like, you know, there's scraps on the kitchen counter, so I think, well, I'll run the scraps out, and then I see flowers that need to be, you know, like the little uh, spent blossoms pinched off, so then I'll do that, and then when I'm doing that, I see something else, and then I go in the house and I start on something, and I, I just feel like I don't always get things done complete to completion, and I don't really like that. So what I'm gonna do now is just find that geranium that I bought this morning, I think it's out front, and I'm going to get my little trowel and go plant that because I just want that done. I thought it'd be fun to show you a little peek at the chicks. They are getting so big. Peter's been bringing them out every now and again. He'll bring them outside and just kind of corral them and let them, you know, run around and everything. We're, we're really finding Puffy. I don't know if that's what they named this one, but the Polish over there with the white tuft on its head. La last year's Polish, the one that sadly got taken out by a predator, uh, it had more of what Peter called an afro. The, the fluff of the feathers was all the way around, where this one this year looks to have just a mohawk. 
So we'll see what, what it ends up looking like as it matures, but it's pretty fun. I really like that one back there on the left. That is an Americana, and it's sort of like this really neat grayish, tannish silver. Again, I look forward to seeing what that one looks like as it matures. Oh, I just saw a kitty sighting. Where'd you go, sugar? Where'd you go? She likes to follow me around outside too. My dwarf Chinese lilac is really, really doing well. Last year we had a really weird year. I think it was the end of August, beginning of September. We actually got another lilac bloom. It was the weirdest thing. I was driving into town. I'm like, wait a minute, those are lilacs. They're supposed to be blooming in May. And yet there they were. It was like the end of August or like I said, beginning of September, something like that, and they were blooming. So I didn't really know what was gonna happen this year, but it looks like, I mean, I can see not only leaves, but those are definitely flower heads forming. So here's the white geranium that I bought this morning, and I'm gonna pot that one up right there, because then I'll have red, white, and kind of this salmon-y pink color in each one. And I just thought that would look really pretty, especially in this blue pot. All right, there we go. In about a week, I'll start giving them some tiger bloom and watch them grow away. <laughs> well, I'm gonna sit and enjoy my patio for a while with my feet up before we have to go. Well, I guess we have an hour and 15 minutes, so I have plenty of time here. And since I don't have to make supper tonight because it's a pizza supper at church, um, yeah, I'm gonna read. So I just picked this up at the library yesterday, The Murmur of Bees. It's good so far. I'm only I'm only on finished up with page 30. I just started it last night. And so far it's caught my attention. The oatmeal jumbles are cooled and now I was just going to give these a cut. You see I already cut them cuz I just wanted to try the edge real quick. But I'm just going to cut these and put half of them on the platter that we're taking tonight and leave half of them home. Good morning everybody. It is an just a glorious day out here today. And I'm heading out here today because I wanna give you all a glimpse of our chickens. So we got eight new chicks this year on top of our other five that we have. And just yesterday, Warren and Peter and I kind of revamped the coop. So I had shown this before. This used to all be fenced in and the dog kennel was over there and all, just all of that. Anyway, this is what's happening here. It's just sort of growing into whatever weeds kind of come up. I know Warren wants to till that area so it kind of smooths out and everything. But what we did here is we incorporated so here's the chicken coop where our bigger chicks, not chicks, chickens, um, live. They fly out all the time and do their thing. Oh, good. So Peter's coming out too. Well, what we did is we just bent this hog panel around to make a separate spot for the little chicks because they are feathered out. But we have them locked in there for the night. So let's get this undone. We have a whole, ouch, that is sharp. <laughs> okay, so we have a whole system here. So we undo the little spring clip and then we move this over, lift the rock, pull the board. And here they come. One, two, three, four, five. Six, come on, seven, eight. six, seven. And where's the eighth one? Right there. And number eight will be coming out. No, okay, so they really are so packed. happy. They already, already really packed down the shavings. Yeah, they really, they definitely do that. So 
So that's what we're doing. We're just repurposing the dog kennel as a little chicken hut because they don't need a heat lamp anymore. They are completely feathered out. Mom's and it was favorite. time for them to get out oh, and no. about. Uh-oh, there they all go. But Mom's favorite is this one. Which one is my favorite? This one. Yep. And what is this one's name? Is this Crystal? Diamond. Diamond. Okay, so Diamond. Yeah, Diamond is my favorite one as far as coloring. I just think that this one is so, so pretty. Oh, she got out. <laughs> Who is this? Do we know the names of the... That one's Brownie. You're positive? How can no, you tell? No, they all look the same. How can you tell with the Rhode Island Reds which is which? I can't. I can't. You can't? Look at them there. We better get some more some more um, feed in there. Going they are crazy. all just going crazy. Their heads almost don't even fit in there anymore. <laughs> look at them all. All crazy. Is that Speedy? <laughs> Speedy yep. over there is like, what's going on? I want to get to them. So this is what we did yesterday is we put chicken wire here so that they can at least see one another to get used to one another, but they can't go through. And they can... The still, big chick the chickens, big chicken they could like, hop they, up. But they could stick their heads through here. Yeah, they and could. Like, they could. Like, Say hi to each other. They can say hi. Yes, they can and say hi to each other. Off. And get their heads pecked off. Get their heads pecked off, you think? Mm -hmm. Chickens can be vicious, can't they? Mm -hmm. And little Sugar, how are you doing this morning, Sugar Girl? So in other news for this for today, I guess, our power was supposed to be turned off at 7.30 this morning for about six hours, they were saying. Um, there's going to be some work done. I guess out the north way, if that means anything to you. <laughs> and um, But it hasn't turned off yet, and it's already 8.30. Warren is gearing up because... <clears throat> so Warren is gearing up for cutting vines. He's doing a renovation project this year of about three and a half acres, is that right? Four, four acres this year. And so he's getting geared up to go and cut vines. So these are walk behind vine cutters, and that's what he's going to be doing. So loading up the rakes and everything. So later today, I actually have to grocery shop badly. So, um, because we're out of ketchup. <laughs> and then actually what's gonna happen is Joseph, Peter, Maria, they're going to go down with Warren and help rake vines uh, once he's done cutting. That won't happen until like 11 o'clock or something like that today that the kids will go down there because I'm gonna do school with Sam this morning Younger kids are all done for the year. I'm going to do school with Sam this morning. We have to do algebra, and then uh, I'll have to correct his anatomy and physiology when he's done with that. Um, and then he goes off to the high school at about 11 o'clock. And then that's when I'm going to leave. And I'm going to go grocery shopping. We already have the car moved outside because we're supposed to have no power. So, you know, automatic garage door opener. Good morning, Joe. Hi, good morning. I love your hat. Did Sam give you that? Yep. Bass Pro Shops? That's a nice hat. I don't want you wearing your winter boots anymore, so what we're going to do is find your tennies. Do you know where they are? Um, I don't know. You don't know. Well, let's look at this pile of shoes. Let's see. Sam, very, very, very Warren, see. Warren, Warren, Peter, Maria, Peter, no, Peter, no, Sam, 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 Sam. Joe, they're right here. <laughs> no, no, they're right here, honey. Seriously. Seriously. There they are. Whoa. Whoa. All right, so you get your your uh, tennies on if you're going outside to play and... Swings and sapo and tramp. Okay. And bike. And so, <laughs> And his hat. So Joe has a lot of plans for today. And like yeah. I said, I'm going to be going grocery shopping later. I don't think I'm going to put the grocery haul video in this video, though. This will be more of just a week in the life, just kind of like what's happening day to day, and that will be its own video. So I have a little bit of time because I see that Sam is working on his, um, on his science right now, so I don't have to do algebra with him quite yet. And I thought, let's water flowers. So I'm actually doing the first fertilizing of my flowers this year. I like to wait about one week, and I planted those last week, Saturday, so it would be like, today's probably already day nine or something like that. So now we'll be on to the Mondays and Thursdays fertilizing of the flowers. And this is what I always use, Tiger Bloom. And you can get it at Amazon. It's fairly expensive though, I would say, but I've just found that it works really, really well. However, 
I just saw on Pinterest a recipe for a homemade uh, fertilizer that they say is equivalent to miracle Grow. So I thought, well, let's just give it a try. Um, I don't know. We're gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna head in in just a minute after I mix up this and I'm gonna mix up a gallon of that particular fertilizer. But I have to find the recipe again. All right, well, I was just looking up the recipe for the homemade miracle Grow, and it says here that to a gallon of water, I should add a tablespoon of Epsom salt, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of ammonia. Well, I do not have Epsom salt. All right, so that's something that I'll have to pick up today when I go to the grocery store. Peter was just gonna fertilize uh, these petunias here, but I said, you know, this should be the one that we use the other fertilizer that I'm gonna make, like the homemade miracle Grow. And we're going to try that on this one and kind of watch how those perform. Because right now, you know, they're just little, just like little starter plants. And we'll see how, how much growth we can get out of those. But he's going to just fertilize the petunia here. This one is one of my favorites. It's so pretty. And I can tell it's getting a little yellow. So it's good that we are, it's good that it's fertilizing day. I have two... Uh, blueberry bushes here. I mean, they are in full bloom, but we rarely get the blueberries because as soon as they are just not even, they're really not even ripe. Like they're at a point where I wouldn't even be ready to pick them yet. The squirrels and birds and chipmunks and whatever come over and get every single blueberry. Usually we get maybe two handfuls, which is kind of a bummer. So I do have laundry that I can fold. I feel like I'm at this really weird impasse though because I have a ton of laundry that needs to be washed. I didn't, well, I guess I did wash some laundry over the weekend. That's why I have a couple loads to fold, but I have a lot more that needs to be washed right now, but I really can't because at any moment, our power is supposed to go off today. Well, it's almost nine o'clock. I think it's quarter to nine now. And so it's like, when is that gonna happen? I could have done so much. I need to bake a cake today and I could have had that done this morning, but I was like, well, if the power's going off at 7.30 and I just, I didn't get up in enough time to, you know, bake a cake for an hour because it's, I wanna make a, um, a black magic cake that's in my cookbook. Sometimes it's called moist chocolate cake. I've, I've heard it called all kinds of things, but um, that takes like 55 minutes to bake. So, and I didn't, I wasn't up early enough to make that. And, all of the, all of that, right? So anyway, I guess I just fold laundry and just continue, sorry for that weird lighting coming in, and I just continue to, I have mirrors that need to be washed, so I suppose I'll do that too while I wait to do algebra with Sam. It's Tuesday now, and I am working on making supper. So earlier today, we actually, today's my mom's birthday, so we actually went and spent the day with her. I made black magic cake, and um, yeah, we just had a nice time there, but it's time to get some supper going. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do lasagna because Peter's been asking for that for a while. So I'm using the recipe that's in my cookbook, page 19, easy lasagna, and I'm doubling the recipe. And I'm unsure yet at this point if I'm just gonna put it into a big 10 by 15 baking dish, you know, big Pyrex baking dish, or if I'm gonna split it into two and just make like half for now, and then I might freeze one. We'll just have to see kind of how it all works out here with how much sauce and everything I make. Um, yeah, so that's what I have going. I just have venison right here. This is two pounds, and the recipe does not call for an onion, but I did chop up a whole onion, and I put that in there. I just think that adds really good flavor to just about any recipe. And then I have a couple jars of the Kroger marinara sauce, I'm gonna add water, some Mrs. Dash, and yeah, that's gonna be everything I'm gonna add into here, get that simmering, and then I'm gonna assemble my, uh, and then I'll get out my, my pan or pans and decide what I'm gonna do for that.
All right, so I decided to make one big one you saw, a 10 by 15, and then the other one I think is something like maybe an eight by 11. I'm not exactly sure what size that pan is, but there's only gonna be five of us home for supper tonight, so I thought we don't really need a huge, huge pan of lasagna. I'll put the big one in the freezer, and I'll bring that out another time, probably in like a month, when we're serving more people. So that went by, that, that was quick. That's one kind of like tip for you if you are a casserole eating family. <laughs> when you're making one casserole, make a second one, put it in the freezer because it's you know just as easy once you have all the ingredients out to assemble it twice. It doesn't take that much more time. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is slice up this cabbage here. I'm gonna have to take some of these outer leaves off it looks like, but I'm gonna slice up this cabbage and I'm gonna get that going in the air fryer. And then we're also, going to be having some garlic bread. This I'll just pop into the either the oven or the air fryer uh, at the end. Probably the oven because the the best for lasagna is to let it bake for an hour covered and then take it out of the oven and then just let it sit on top of your stovetop for about 15 minutes. A good solid 15 minutes so it can kind of cool down and everything can kind of set up and it's just a lot easier to cut that way and to serve you know because if you wait if you serve it too hot you lift it up and everything slides out and you get like three noodles on your plate and everything else was left in the pan so give it some time to kind of set up cool off a little bit and in that time that's when i'll put this in the oven Well, it's a new day here, and I'm going to insert a couple photos right now because we were on our way home, and we saw a white deer. I don't know if it was a true albino. I'd have to look at the pictures again. And anyway, and we saw a little fawn. So I'd use my my phone, and we just took a couple pictures. So I'm going to insert those right now because it was just it was just so cool, and it was seemed pretty early for us. Usually, we see the fawns a little bit later in May, it seems like, but here we are. May 18th and we saw a little fawn. It was just so adorable. Anyway, we're home. What I'm doing right now here until lunch is cleaning off my desk. I have actually an area that appears to be um, getting clear. I have stuff down here that I'm kind of organizing out. I have the garbage is just filling up and I just have so much stuff there and there and there. I have to go through and all of that and I have stuff over here. So yeah, there's just so much stuff to go through. Well, looky, looky. <laughs> Look how much better that looks. I am so, so happy to have this cleared off. I feel like I actually could work at this desk again. I have just a couple things here. This is what I usually do. I just like lay things out on the floor. I took care of all the piles here, but I have just a couple more piles to take care of, and then it's gonna be time to have lunch. It's actually already one o'clock, so I think that it's time to make some lunch. We're just gonna have leftovers, so we went, we ordered pizza yesterday for my mom's birthday, and so we're gonna have leftover pizza. And we also have a piece, I think one piece left of the lasagna, so that'll be lunch. Really simple, eat up the leftovers. And then this afternoon, I'd like to make some soup. It's actually pretty chilly today. Um, chilly, windy, it was rainy this morning, so I just thought soup sounded pretty good for supper tonight. All right, here we are, it's Thursday already, and Warren has been cutting vines. So what that basically means is we have a couple beds that we'll be planting this year, which means um, well, cranberries are a perennial. They live for a long, 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 long time. Sometimes, though, you want a new variety for whatever 
for lots of different reasons. Um, we renovate and you know tear up the old vines and uh, replant and put down new vines. Anyway, so you might be able to notice that there's like cranberry vines along the edge here, but he has a, a sickle mower which he doesn't have down here right now because he has all the vines cut. But um, now we're just raking and collecting all of these vines over here and we'll be taking them up to the house or near the house which is where we water them and that's kind of in a nutshell what's going down today so I guess we'll go and talk to Warren see what he has to say about it and um, I better grab a rake and get to work last week I mentioned to Warren that I would probably let's see I think this rake I would like I mentioned to him last week that I would come down and help um, him with raking the vines and then whatever happened Monday and Tuesday I don't even remember what was going on but anyway I was not able to uh, be down here at all and then on Wednesday he had other things that he had to do all day and now here we are Thursday so the vines lay clockwise here so what I'm trying to do is get all the vines off this side you, so you guys can start on the north end and rake south now you can see where that rake is. Everything to the right is already done because you can see where the vines are laying there. So let me get a few more piles out of the way so that you guys can start on that north end, okay? Okay. okay. So he wants us, did he say rake from north to south? Yeah. So we're going to start down on that end and we're going to rake this way? Yeah. yeah. That's what we did yesterday. Or okay. Hey, put on your happy faces for a minute, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of unhappy rakers. So we're just working at raking all of this. And we just work in a line, right? We keep trying to make a line of vines. Warren is still... Raking. Yep, he's still picking up piles. And then all of those piles right there are all going to have to be picked up yet. The sky is looking a little bit like there's going to be a storm moving in. They are calling for a storm. I mean, that's west. We're looking west right now. and Yeah, but like found here. Um, What's over there, Joe? And the sky about this windy. Um, I mean, it's not windy what? right now, but it looks like it's going to rain. Um, this wind, like raindrops, stop me. I know. Peter felt one raindrop already, so. I think it's coming. All right, Maria, you're going to pick that rake up, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is not anyone's favorite job. I mean, obviously, it's not Warren's favorite job either. Yeah. But there's a pile of vines, and I can't remember. What did Dad say, Maria? Are we supposed to be doing nine tons of vines? I don't know. Or was it four tons? I feel like it's around four. Five tons? You know what, we're going to have to ask him that question. Maybe it's six. Maybe it's six? We should probably listen That's better. around the middle. Well, the kids were never so happy to see rain in their life. Warren's like, well, it's raining, so no more raking. But he's still pitchforking the vines that he mowed. I told him that I would grab a pitchfork and help him out. So I'm going to get over there and help him a little bit. And we're going to try to beat this storm. Good morning, everyone. This is going to be the last day in this like week in the life, which I think has actually spanned over a week, if I'm not mistaken. I think I started filming and then a couple days went by and I was like, oh, I think I forgot to film. And then I thought I should kind of, you know, jump back in. Anyway, just day-to-day -day life around here. Unfortunately, though, today is... Um, it's just a sad day. You all know that we bought eight chicks this year and they were doing fabulously. And earlier in this video, you saw that we actually moved them outside. They were completely feathered in and everything. 
and what we have them in right now is a dog house and we have a door and then we put a board and then a couple of rocks down and that's what we do for nighttime so we lock them up um, in the at night so that well one so that they still stay warm they don't have a heat lamp anymore um, but we still want to keep them warm and then also of course predators we hadn't had any problems with predators in a while like a long long while um well probably since like last summer anyway the one night um it was it was real late and kind of peter and i we both take it upon ourselves to be the ones that go out and uh, lock the chickens up in that and anyway it was late and it was raining and i was like and, and peter I, he was already in bed and I knew that he hadn't done it and I thought I should probably go out there and lock them up and I thought well it's raining I know that they would go into the dog house and stay in there when you know I, I just know that that's what they would do so I didn't go out well the next morning Peter went out and we had signs of a chicken being gone and um who was gone dart dart was just a beautiful beautiful black and white Americana absolutely beautiful um, chicken. So that was just yesterday morning and it was very, very sad. So we had already put chicken wire up, but we had run out. We wanted to put more chicken wire. So then yesterday, Warren went to the hardware store. He got more chicken wire, but then the whole afternoon, um, you know, as soon as we were done, we didn't even finish raking the vines yesterday because the storm blew in and it basically just rained and thundered and lightning all night long. Like, most of the evening and then it did the same thing all throughout the night. Peter and I made sure that everything was locked down as much as we can possibly lock it down <laughs> and then I thought you know well we didn't get to get the rest of the chicken wire over the top but it's you know it's storming. I don't think the predators are going to be out. The predator we think it is is a raccoon. I know the story is getting long but anyway what ended up happening I woke up this morning it was shortly before six o'clock and I looked out the bedroom window and I saw that there were chicks the, the young chicks were running around and in there they were running around in their pen and I thought that that's not good at all they shouldn't be out because there's no way that they could get that uh, door open themselves so I went out there and unfortunately we had three so my favorite which I think the kids named Diamond if I'm not or Crystal I can't remember which Diamond, Maria is telling me. So my favorite was taken and then also two of the Rhode Island Reds were taken. So we now have our Polish, which do we still call the Polish Puffy this year? No, it's Crystal. Crystal, okay. So the Polish is Crystal. So we still have our Polish. We have one Americana and we have two Rhode Island Reds. And of course it is still thundering and lightning here today. And so, but, so we can't do any more of the raking. Warren is out double checking water and everything because we got a lot of rain overnight so he has to go and like adjust water and just make sure that things aren't flooding. Make sure that well, there isn't water getting into the new beds and all that kind of thing. Anyway so he's doing that and then as soon as he comes back then Peter and Warren and I are going to go out and we are going to double and triple and electrify the chicken wire and then I'm going to put spikes on it too. So no, I'm really not. Maria's like, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. But we are going to chicken wire the whole thing, Maria. And even over the very top, because we just cannot risk yet another night of that predator. Peter actually set a trap, both a live trap and a foot trap. Both were snapped, and I kind of thought that they were snapped due to the rain. But when he was investigating, he saw that there was actually a little bit of fur in the foothold trap that he set. So must so the raccoon must have gotten in, but just maybe not, maybe just like by a toe or something. That happens all the time. Yeah, and um, yeah. in the live trap, all the like bait were gone. Like the biscuit and the bacon was gone. I don't really know how that worked, right? <laughs> how it was snapped, yet the stuff was gone. It's really, really frustrating. And even like deeper than that it's frustrating because the fur prices so when trapping fur prices have just been in the tank for quite a while so it's actually discouraged and you know a lot of people from trapping even Warren doesn't trap quite as he definitely does not trap as hard as he used to and so yeah the predators they're just they're just running rampant and I know when Warren picked up chicken wire at the hardware store yesterday the the guy that owns the hardware store he was talking to him and he said yeah he said you're not the only ones he said the predators are just 
just crazy, um, you know, just really, really wreaking havoc on all of people's livestock. And that's what we're going to be working on shortly. So I'll give, I'll show you just a little bit probably of that going down. And then we're hoping that by 1.30 today that the rain is going to move out and we can get down and rake the rest of the cranberry bed. And what else is going to happen today, Maria? Anything else happening? You're hoping to call your friend and have a sleepover. Yeah. We'll have to call and see if that's going to work out. It's Friday. We're going to have cheese pizza for supper. I have some cheese pizzas that I got at the Cloverdale Country Store, and I'm going to pull those out, and then we're going to do what we have been doing, which is topping them with jalapenos and onions and uh, what else have we been doing? Sometimes some black olives, that kind of thing. So that's what that's kind of how the day is going, going to unfold, and I will show you bits and pieces of it as it happens. All right, well, attitudes are a lot better today than they were yesterday with the raking. I don't know if it's because it's cooler or what's going on, but anyway, Warren is picking up all the vines. Let me zoom in for you all. There we go. So he's picking up those piles of vines down there that were cut and pitchforked onto a trailer and hauled to the end. And now the kids and I are back down and we are doing like this raking part where you just kind of rake. I'll show you what we're getting. It's very wet because we got so much rain overnight. I know this morning Warren said we got an inch and a quarter overnight and then it's been raining for a good part of today too. So anyway, do you see kind of like this little line? And that's what I'm raking right now. So we just, I'll walk you through it. We just go up here. There's our flag marking where we are. I put my rake down. And then we're just gonna rake, rake, rake. We're raking any vines that got left behind. And then we're just gonna rake them until it matches up with that kind of little pile right there. Kind of like that big puddle. That's about as far as we have to go. A little bit past that, maybe six feet past that. But yeah, like I said, attitudes are better today. I don't know if it's that we just kind of figured out our rhythm yesterday or what, but Joe better back up here. I'm not liking that at all. Joe, you gotta move! He thinks I'm just taking a picture of him. He's all smiley over there. You have to move! Make sure you're going straight. Stop. All right, so we're back up to the house here. We're done. Yep. Peter drove the four-wheeler back. You haven't been driving the four-wheeler much, have you? Was that fun? Yeah. That was fun, I, I bet. I haven't drove a four-wheeler since I crashed the four other four-wheeler. Yeah, yeah, Hello. that's been a long time. So anyway, we're just waiting for, you can hear the dump truck. Warren and Maria are coming back in the dump truck. And then here is basically just kind of like, just the setup here. We just have the dump trucks and then the vines are all up there and sprinklers. So here's a sprinkler and then he'll stake that in place up on the other dump truck. The sprinklers. The, the water just comes in and there's all these little holes. Uh-huh. And it's that just spreading out and waters and vines. Okay, I'll head out and turn around. Only if Dad wants you to now. Ma Maria's stuck in the dump truck. <laughs> I have to clean the screen. All right, so just give us a quick, tell us how wrong I was on the vines, how many tons of vines we need. <laughs> well, we need four tons. So this is about a ton and a half. 
the green dump truck. Yeah, and this is about, I'm hoping, two, two and, and a half. half. And we got a little bit here and a little bit here. <laughs> and I, I think I'm very close to my yeah. estimates just based on history. Yeah, I was going to say you've done this so many I times. I think I actually got a little more than a ton and a half on there. Perfect. So we should honestly be great. Okay, that was if, my foot. If we have a little more than four ton. That's okay. It's, it's okay. better to have more than not enough, right? right. Can it just go right over there? So let's go over the hose and we're yep. right under. I have to take these screens out because I'm sure they're plugged. Whoa. Yep, all the way. Just like that. And then the water will just run right on there. Well, here we are. It's Friday evening and I am closing out this full week in the life plus. So let me just give you guys a little peek here at the chickens. We bought more chicken wire and we enclosed the roof as well. Um, but we ran out so we did not get this part done so actually the four little ones are going to go into the shed tonight we're just going to put them in a box and um, keep them inside the shed where there's a door that's completely closed because we just absolutely cannot risk losing another one and then these five we will just close up because we can drop down that hatch door that's over there. We'll just close them up inside there for the night. And we put a board in front of the hatch door as well. So it's very heavy. And that is how we are going to protect all of the chicks. It is such, uh, um, it just consumes so much of my brain power trying to keep animals when you have literally, there's the woods right there. <laughs> there's the woods so the predators can just get so close and I guess I just end it there the predators can get close what we're doing here now tonight is oh there it goes <laughs> I don't know all right so what we're gonna be doing here tonight is just going and doing some fishing we're gonna go for a walk and then end with some fishing and that is gonna be it I hope that you guys enjoyed this long week in the life video and um, if you've stuck it out to the end um, you could subscribe and then you'll always be posted of my new videos that come out I try to get videos done three times a week May has been really really crazy though and I think I've done one or two each week but anyway that's it I'm gonna give you one quick peek of es at Eska Eska we have to put you away don't we or unless you're going fishing <laughs> she's like I'm out of here and with that I'm out of here too you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are.